Next cause a split call, the Honourable Ruth Dyson, Mr. five Speaker, minutes. That's, that's correct. It's very hard um, after you hear that member to really think why on earth would she be so poorly liked, not only within her own caucus, but within her own party, in her own election. Let me give, give myself a minute to figure out why that might be. It doesn't take long. I, see, I love watching the faces of her colleagues as she makes a contribution to the House, and they all start wincing and whinging, Mr Speaker. I'm very pleased to speak in this third reading of the Resource Management Bill. Uh, to make sure that it is on the record that not only I personally but also the Labour Party opposes this legislation. My colleague, the Honourable Marion Street, quite correctly pointed out that this is not a one-off bill, this is not a one-off amendment to do anything that the members opposite purport it to do, but actually it's part of a series of measures to undermine the principles of the Resource Management Act. The, the reason the Resource Management Act was developed over both national and Labour governments actually, was to move from a centralised planning perspective to an effects-based piece of legislation, and around the world that process is envied. It has done New Zealand very well. And I also want to put on record, Mr Speaker, that this process is not perfect, and where councils are underperforming, they should be called to account and given proper support to improve their processes, because this should not be about delaying. This should be about having a regime that looks of the, at the effects of a proposal and ensures that the founding principle of that consideration is protection of the environment. It should have at its heart consideration of the rights of our citizens to have a say into what is happening in their community, in their city, in their region, and indeed in our country. So ensuring that we have environmental protection and the voice of our community is critical to the success of this process. This legislation weakens both of those provisions. Uh, Mr Speaker, my colleague, colleague Sir William Seo also mentioned two other important provisions. That is to support rather than uh, tie up local authorities and give them the respect and the recognition that they deserve to get on and do their mandated work as efficiently as possible. This legislation pushes aside our democratically elected councillors' rights to carry out those functions. It's just another reduction in our respect for local authorities. And it also fails to recognise, and in fact works in the opposite direction, of central government recognising the role in local development of a local authority. So there, there is no logical rationale to this legislation. It's one of the more ideological pieces of legislation that we've seen in this House for some time. A strong advocate for the environment, and indeed a strong advocate often for the National Party, Guy Salmon, said on national television that this process of reforming the Resource Management Act was the first time we had had a Minister for the Environment in New Zealand since the very first Minister for the Environment, very first time we'd had a Minister for the Environment who moved away from protecting the standards for the environment and reduced protection and standards of the environment. I don't think that Guy Salmon will be promoting, let alone ne uh, voting, national next year. So, Mr Speaker, this is a sad time for this House. This is a bill that is not supported in a way that it should be as the way the resource management was originally developed across both national and Labor. It was before other parties were in Parliament, and I regret that it looks like it will be progressed in this House. I call Denise Roach. Tēnā koe, Mr Speaker. Tēnā koutou i te whare. The Green